Beginning in the spring of 1942, German U-boats attacked American civilian freighters and tankers in the Gulf of Mexico, often within sight of unsuspecting coastal cities and towns in Texas, Florida, and Louisiana. Unprepared for a war that had quickly reached their own shores, American naval and Coast Guard forces sank only one U-boat in the Gulf. A year later, the U-boats were gone, but they left behind the wrecks of 56 American ships. More than 60 years later, a team of archaeologists, biologists, and media professionals journeyed out into the Gulf to study this deadly legacy for the positive purposes of science. Using modern underwater technology, this expert team analyzed six of the wrecks to better understand how time and the natural workings of the sea had transformed sunken metal ships into thriving artificial reefs. Exploring these shattered vessels in depths ranging from 280 to 6,500 feet, this group of government, university, and private industry specialists discovered in this former battlefield a rich underwater laboratory. About one mile and a half from the mouth of the Mississippi River, the Deep Gulf Rex mission prepares to make its first dive. Now we're sitting over the side of the Virginia. The ROV's going in the water. Starting to lower it down, they're about 190 feet right now, moving down towards the bottom, so within just a few minutes, the ROV will be down on the bottom and uh, we'll be taking a look at the Virginia for the first time. But one of the main things is to get a positive identification for this site that we believe is the Virginia. And then uh, we have some biological collection to do. Uh, we also would like to try if the visibility is going to cooperate to, to map out how, the extent, how far the extent of the uh, debris field is. The tanker Virginia was among the first American cargo ships lost in the Gulf. On May 12, 1942, the ship was headed towards Baton Rouge, Louisiana, with 180,000 barrels of gasoline it had loaded on in Baytown, Texas. On that warm spring afternoon, the U-507, the first U-boat to enter the Gulf, fired three torpedoes into the Virginia. The ship exploded. 27 of the 41 crew members died in an attack that happened so quickly that there was not even time to launch the lifeboats. The 14 survivors were all severely burned. Now lying 280 feet from the surface of the Gulf, the Virginia is the shallowest of the wrecks the mission team will visit. Because the Virginia and Halo are located in, in, at the shallower water depths and near the discharge of the river, uh, you tend to run into more problems there with visibility than you would in the deeper sites. Despite the sediment that often reduces visibility at this depth, the scientists find that the burned ship is now supporting underwater life. When the sample basket returns to the surface, it is filled with conger eels. Professor Will Patterson and his team measure and photograph the eels before releasing them back into the Gulf. Well, in the shallowest spot, the, the Virginia, um, that was in about 300 feet of water. And so the community there was dominated by vermilion snapper, red snapper, and some groupers. The vermilion snapper, they, they feed on uh, zooplankton-sized particles when they're young, and then they move on to feeding on macroinvertebrates. But they're very important in, in transferring energy from lower trophic levels to the higher piscivores. Um, red snapper and the groupers are, are going to be the apex predators on the reefs um, besides sharks that come by and visit to feed and things like amberjacks and king mackerel that are reef associated but not necessarily uh, true reef fishes. And as we move into deeper waters, the fish are going to be le much less abundant and we're not going to have any really true reef fishes. With their work on the Virginia completed, the team heads toward the next site on their mission plan, the wreck of the halo. The steam tanker Halo was en route from Galveston, Texas to New Orleans, loaded with crude oil when, in the early morning of May 20th, 1942, it was hit just below its bridge by two torpedoes from the U-506. Fire spread rapidly throughout the ship, which sank within three minutes of the attack. Despite the inferno around them, 27 of the 42 crew members survived. Wars, storms, and bad luck have sunk ships in the Gulf for centuries. Often, several different ships have gone down in the same general area. Here, near the busy southwest pass of the Gulf, in the relatively shallow depth of 500 feet, there's a great possibility of mistaking one wreck for another. Along with studying the abundant marine life at the site, the mission must also positively identify the wreck 
as the halo. When we started comparing our notes, uh, some of the things didn't seem to be adding up. and uh, So we had to come back around to the halo after we finished some survey work and uh, went to key features on the vessel to, uh, to look specifically at those, at those key features and found that they did match the halo. Despite visibility problems at the relatively shallow depth, the archaeological team was able to clearly examine the stern and windlass on the bow, the bridge configuration, and the aft deckhouse. After consulting photographs and architectural drawings, the archaeologists confirmed that this wreck was the halo. Like the Virginia, the halo, a ship built for commerce and sunk by war, is now part of an environment supporting many different living creatures, ranging in size from small invertebrates to a very large Warsaw grouper.